This talk is a summary of recent research that was performed at Nascent on the topic of safe artificial intelligence using control theory. We are interested in bringing artificial intelligence into production lines and industrial scenarios. These are regulated by international standards and present challenges that have been addressed by control engineers. For instance, they can be subject to operational constraints, require high repeatability and precision. In order to bring AI into the picture, we have formalized a set of requirements that include, for instance, the ability to return to the system initial state and, more in general, the ability to continue to work. The motivation for using AI is that classic control theory can sometimes be too conservative. So, we wish to bring in the flexibility of neural network technology while retaining similar guarantees to the ones of the established methods. Our strategy is to study neural network models and model-based decision-making with the help of elements of robust control and formal verification. I will introduce you to four of our latest research paper that cover the questions of how can dynamics and control help deep learning and secondly, how can neural networks help for dynamics and control. We started by looking for ways that dynamics and control could help deep learning. This work is from NeurIPS 2018. We studied the problem of image classification using an unrolled neural network architecture. In particular, we wish to analyze a feedforward network architecture constructed by unrolling a recurrent network. This is an interesting problem as the network can reuse its own weights and possibly have infinite depth. Our final network will consist of several blocks, each block being an unrolled architecture, potentially with infinite unroll length. Then we wish our network to be able to stop the unroll automatically based on the data that it's currently processing. A known problem with RNNs is that they can suffer from vanishing or exploding gradients. To deal with vanishing gradients, one can use LSTMs, highway networks, or residual networks. Exploding gradients, however, remain a risk, unless we adopt some form of normalization. If we consider the blocks as dynamical systems, then the absence of exploding gradients can be certified by the system's stability. As you can see in the figure, the unroll of an unstable block could result in increasingly large slopes. We propose an architecture called NaseNet that addresses this problem of vanishing and exploding gradients. NaseNet is made of residual-like RNNs that mitigate vanishing gradients. Moreover, we make the blocks stable by construction, which means that they can be unrolled forever without exploding gradients. To enforce stability, we devised a projection on the residual weights that deal with the internal state of the RNN. These methods can be used for convolutional networks where it scales much better than output normalization, like batch normalization. As a result, the function produced by NaseNet is Lipschitz and robust, even for an infinite unroll length. We trained for a fixed unroll length, then at test time, we use a stopping criteria based on the residual. We tested the approach on Cypher 10, where we noticed that the algorithm was not only able to generalize as well as the state of the art, but was also able to cluster pictures with similar texture in terms of the unrolled depth. So in summary, the NaseNet will learn to stop at similar unroll length for pictures that have similar texture or similar difficulty, which is quite interesting also in terms of explainability and of adaptive computation. Following the NaseNet work, we brought in some of the insights from deep learning back into the domain of dynamical systems and control. We devised a new architecture called TASINNET that has an inductive bias, which makes it suitable for robotics and physical systems. The network uses skip connections to reduce the effect of vanishing gradients and potentially train over long sequences. We use this in the context of adaptive model predictive control for a double pendulum with changing parameters. The skip connections of the residual network 
and of Nasenet can be seen as an Euler discretization of a continuous time dynamical system. Since most mechanical systems are second order, we chose to have a second order RNN model, where we use a fully connected neural network to estimate accelerations, given the input torques and the previous velocity and position estimates from the neural network cell. Then we integrate once for the velocity prediction and another time for the positions. In the first integration step, we chose to use Tustin instead of Euler as a discretization method, as this provides a further skip connection that facilitates gradient flow, as well as reduce the discretization error. Effectively, we are now able to learn a continuous time model from possibly sparse and long sequences. For the exploding gradients, one can still mitigate by using insights from NaseNet, although we do not enforce projections on this example as we wish to capture the unstable dynamics of the double pendulum. We tested this approach on an adaptive MPC. Our idea is to use an unscented Kalman filter to update online the weights of the last layer of the MLP that predicts the acceleration, while also correcting the velocity estimate online. This is performed point by point, differently from batch reinforcement learning. An MPC is then used to generate the control signals by planning over a finite horizon with the latest model update. When tested on the double pendulum, the network was first of all able to capture very long sequences as well as the equilibrium points of the system. Then we changed the mass and friction of the pendulum and tested our adaptive strategy, which was able to quickly recover stability and control of the pendulum to any feasible set points. Following this line of thought, and given the recent success of neural ODEs, we decided to investigate the training of models in continuous time as in the direct learning of an ODE, without the use of an explicit ODE solver. Both the forward solvers and the adjoint method can in fact suffer from instability at training time, namely exploding gradients. They can also suffer from vanishing gradients. We proposed a method for system identification for ODE training in the case of fully observable states that turns the sequence learning problem into the learning of one step ahead derivatives. This is fully time parallel and incredibly faster than sequence learning. This work was presented at iClear 2020. In general, learning one step trajectories doesn't work well once you use your model to forecast long sequences at test time. This is because explicit solvers like Euler amplify the generalization error over the iterations. In order to improve generalization, we first relax the dynamics constraint for the formal model and use a Lagrangian formulation of the learning problem with its residual being penalized. This means that no OD solver is actually used in order to compute the forward nor the backward pass. Secondly, we compress the trajectories using Legendre polynomials of a given order p. This gives temporal consistency and allows one to estimate p derivatives of the data in closed form. The first derivative information is then used to compute the continuous time residual used in the loss function. This idea resulted in a family of algorithms for system identification that performed incredibly well in terms of speed, accuracy, and generalization. We focused on two algorithms. The first one learns the polynomial weights by collocation method. It's an exact method and has certain assumptions on the cost function. The second one is more general. It can work for a general cost function and performs the alternate update of the network weights and of the polynomial coefficients. So we alternatively optimize for the polynomial, then we fix the polynomial, we optimize for the network weights, and so on, and we repeat this all the time. We tested the performance of the methods on a multi-vehicle problem, where we wish to learn the vehicle dynamics given an obstacle avoidance control law. 
The algorithms resulted in impressive speed and accuracy gains with respect to forward solvers such as forward Euler, as well as the adjoint methods. To test robustness, we made the, the vehicle formation unstable by increasing the obstacle avoidance gain. In this case, our methods were the only ones able to learn at all the dynamics of the system. As you can see from the high gain figure, both forward solvers and the adjoint methods provided no robustness to instability in the data, while our methods continue to learn without problems even for the high gain scenario. At iClear, we also presented a work on learning a stable monoperative controller. Monoperative control is a direct shooting method for solving constrained optimal control problems using a receding horizon. We predict n steps in the future using a model and then compute the optimal sequence of actions that minimizes a cost function. Then we take the first step of the optimal action sequence and we feed it to the real system. The whole procedure is then repeated again as we measure a new state. We wish to learn the cost function of the MPC or the model used by the MPC using backpropagation. This was recently done in the literature by other authors, but the proposed approach had a few limits. The first limit is that it does not address stability of the resulting MPC controller, which means that the learned MPC could make the physical system unstable or not be robust to any model mismatch which means poor generalization in terms of machine learning. The second limitation is that the method has some difficulties in dealing with heavily non-convex problems, which are typical of neural networks. In this work, we decided to focus on conditions for guaranteeing that the learned MPC is stable for the case of a linear model. In order to have stability, the MPC predictions need to terminate inside an invariant set at time n. We refer to this later as the safe set. And the cost of the final prediction need to be a local control Lyapunov function. We will come back to this into more detail later. For a positive definite cost function, infinite horizon optimality is sufficient for stability. So it is enough to compute the infinite horizon solution, at least locally, to provide stability globally or in a bigger region. For the case of linear quadratic costs and no constraints, we know that the solution is given by the linear quadratic regulator. A classic way to have stability is to, in fact, append the QR cost to the MPC. We then have to provide that the predictions end up in a region where the constraints are not active, so the AQR is optimal at final step n, and that gives stability. We devised a method to differentiate through the solution of a linear quadratic regulator, as well as the whole MPC problem with stability guarantees. By doing so, we can also compute a lower bound on the horizon length that gives infinite horizon optimality and stability. We tested our algorithm on imitation learning for a 1D vehicle platoon problem. The vehicles need to keep within a given distance from each other and follow the leader, subject to acceleration limits. We learned the cost function given demonstration data from an infinite horizon MPC. The learned solution is stable and the reconstruction error decreases as we increase the horizon length, as this is shown in the figure until we reach infinite horizon optimality at n equals 20. We will now continue to talk about safe learning with two additional works. The first one is a workshop paper for NeurIPS 2019, and the last one is still unpublished. When doing safe learning, we wish to continuously improve our knowledge of the world by means of exploration, while being able to safely return to the equilibrium points. This can be done in a cycle as shown in figure. We define safety as for the state being in a safe set, namely a level set of a Lyapunov function. This is a distance function that decreases over time when we use a safe control policy. This means that once you are in the set, you know that there is a control policy that keeps you always in the set. 
and that's why the set is safe. We learn this Lyapunov function using a neural network. Differently from previous works, we learn it without labels and by only using one-step data from a surrogate model. This model is a Bayesian RNN. We use the uncertainty estimate to produce a robust safe set with an approximate min-max control problem. Finally, we jointly learn a controller and a Lyapunov function neural networks with alternate gradient descent. We can formally verify results through probabilistic verification, through sampling. We tested the approach on an inverted pendulum and noticed that with more data and less uncertainty, see the top figure, the estimated safe set depicted in the middle figure decreases, eh, sorry, increases in size as expected. We then used the safe set within an MPC framework to collect data safely and efficiently. At the bottom of the figure, you can see that our safe exploration is more efficient than random sampling. Finally, in this work, Neural Lyapunov MPC, we use a model predictive controller as a policy for safe learning instead of a neural network. We focused on a single deterministic model with limited uncertainty and formulated the MPC problem with constraints. The idea is that we can extend the stability region of the MPC and reduce the prediction horizon by learning a better value function, in this case, a better Lyapunov function. Our final MPC will only need to have a prediction horizon of one. A unitary horizon is good if we want to avoid propagation of model uncertainty, which can limit the robustness of the MPC when applied to the real world. We have theoretical results on stability and robustness based on the neural network Lyapunov certificate and on the scaling factor alpha depicted here. We also have a bound on the solution error for the MPC given a suboptimal value function and an imperfect forward model. This extends some recent work from Emo Todorov's group. The proposed algorithm is the following. We alternatively learn a Lyapunov function neural network and the corresponding scaling term alpha in the MPC cost. This is such that we can have stability guarantees according to a stability loss function. We initialize the Lyapunov function from demonstrations, generally from a long horizon MPC or an optimal controller. We tested the algorithm on a single inverted pendulum as well as a double pendulum and a vehicle kinematics problem. These figures show the learning curves, the number of stable points and the change in the Lyapunov function shape and the safe set, as well as their scaling factor alpha in the MPC loss. This is all done within two iterations. There are two stages of backpropagation for the Lyapunov function, then there is a line search for alpha, and we iterate this a couple of times and find out that our demonstrator is already matched. In this case, the demonstrator was an LQR. And you can see that there is a limit on alpha. Despite the fact that the theory says that alpha should be as big as possible, then there is always a limitation due to numerical conditioning in the solver, so the search is actually required for this scaling factor of the Lyapunov function. For the car, the demonstrator is a long horizon MPC, as the LQR cannot do the job here. We noticed our proposed algorithms result in an MPC that is more robust to uncertainty than the one used for demonstrations. In fact, if we plug in the wrong surrogate model, our MPC is still able to stabilize the vehicles and reach the target. This is because of the short horizon that limits the propagation of uncertainty, as we mentioned before. While the demonstrator is a long horizon MPC and with an imperfect model, the uncertainty makes it less robust. Thank you very much for your attention.